Hey guys, what's up? Serena Pia here from thriftdiving.com. So in my last video, I did promise you that I would give you a tutorial on how to make this cool wall art behind me. It's super simpy, super simpy, super simpy. It's super simpy. <laughs> Dude, it comes with a remote. I can easily turn it off and turn it on. And it's got like eight different settings. Come on, go on, go on. There it goes. <laughs> so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this. Don't worry, if you are a newbie, you've never used a jigsaw before, I have all of the resources to help you get there. I promise you this project is not going to be difficult. It's pretty simple. It'll take you about two hours. And I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to do it. So by the fall, by the winter time when you are having family over to your house, I guarantee they're gonna feel welcomed into your house. Stick with me, cause we're gonna do it right now. Okay, so let's jump into this tutorial. We have a lot to cover. Let's go to defont.com. That is where I found the font that I used for this project. If you go to the little search box at the top right hand corner, type in fabulous, that's the name of the font, and search, it's the first result that comes up. And let me tell you, this name is so fitting because this font is so gorgeous. So if you type in the word family, it gives you a preview of what the font looks like with that word. So click on the word family on the fabulous font and it will give you a little gray box to the right hand side where you can download it. Now I'm using a Mac computer. So these instructions are gonna be for installing the font to your computer if you have a Mac. Do a little bit of research, you'll be able to get those instructions if you have a PC. So type in font book into your search bar. And if you click that little plus sign, it will allow you to install the fonts to your Mac. The first one there that you see with all the, with all the question marks, that's the free version. The fabulous script, that's the one that I paid for. So if you are doing this for just your personal projects, but if you are doing it to sell, you will need to to buy a uh, commercial license. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is pull up a word processing document. I don't have Microsoft Word, but I do have Mac Pages. And because we have the font installed, we can type hello, we can type family, any word, and we will have the fabulous font available to us. But what we really need is for this font to be a JPEG, it needs to be a picture. So we're on a Mac, we're gonna hit Shift Command number four, and we're gonna screenshot that word family and it will save it to my desktop as a JPEG. Now we can move on to the next step, which is to blow it up into a bigger version. Now the site that we're gonna to use to blow up this word art is called rasturbator.net. Crazy name, but hey. All right, so click create a poster and you're gonna upload that image that you just saved, that word art. It's going to allow you to pretty much decide how large you want to make this thing. It's amazing, you can actually upload a file and print off 1,000 pages to create probably a, an entire mural for your family, for your family walls. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and change this to inch. We're gonna change the paper sizes to the US letter size. And over here to the right, it's in centimeters, but you can click inch and change it depending on where you live. And once you click the paper size, it will tell you how wide, how many sheets of paper this is going to use. Now for this right now, it's about 12 sheets. We can change it to five and a half. We can change it to five. And keep in mind that this is using your printer paper. So if you don't have a printer that can handle this kind of job, you know, by all means go to a Staples, go to a print shop and print it on really good quality paper because the, the better quality of paper you use, the better your stencil will be and you'll see here in just a moment. But for the five sheets wide, it's gonna give us 20 sheets of paper that we're going to print. So click continue, you wanna select no effects, and on the next page, you'll select black under roster color and white under background color. The next page is gonna tell you, okay, click here to print 20 page posters. All right, so that means you're gonna get a PDF of 20 sheets of paper in one file, one PDF file. And you see here, I'm opening it and you're like, okay, what is this file? It doesn't make any sense right now, but it's a grid and every sheet of paper is a part of a grid, like a puzzle that you're gonna to put together. And I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. Okay, so now that I've got all of the sheets of paper printed out, I've got them labeled with the numbers, I'm just gonna start laying them out in the position. So this is number one, this is number two, and this is number three. So you see that it's coming together. We've got the F and part of the A. 
And number four goes here at the top. And we're just gonna roughly lay them out just to make sure we know how big this is going to be. Sometimes you don't really know, you can't really visualize it until you print it out. Now for this part, you definitely wanna use a paper cutter. It will print with some margins on the paper and you wanna remove those so you can easily put it together. Okay, so now that we have our word laid out, we are ready to tape this together. We're just gonna use some regular tape and we're going to try to line this up as precisely as possible because we are creating a template. We've taped it all together. It's as exact as we could possibly make it. And now we are ready to cut it out. And it's true what they say, everything that you need to know you learned in kindergarten that includes cutting with scissors. So take your time, you don't have to rush through this. You are creating a stencil that you will be able to use over and over and over again. So take your time. For this project, I'm using three quarter inch birch plywood, which is a furniture grade. It's gonna stain really nicely. Now the size of the plywood you need really depends on the size of the word art that you are doing. This one that I have here, this is another sample. It's a little smaller than the one I was just cutting out. And I got started a little early with doing the tracing and the cutting. I was very anxious to get started, but I'm gonna show you how to do this, how to lay it out. Now what you wanna do is make sure that you have it straight, as straight as possible. And you're not gonna to wanna to tape it down. You're not gonna to wanna to use spray adhesive. If you are putting some stain on it, make sure that you just put some heavy things on top of it to hold it in place. And very carefully, we're gonna take a mechanical pencil and just trace all along the perimeter of the stencil. And because we're using good quality paper, the stencil is, is gonna hold up. You know, your pencil will be able to drift over those edges and give you a nice stencil so that you'll be able to cut it out with a jigsaw. We're in the garage and we are ready to get started with cutting this out. Now, I wanna point out the tools that we're gonna to need. We will need a jigsaw and we will need a power drill. And remember, when you're working with power tools, you gotta to cover your eyes. I like these eyes and uh, I like these ears too. <laughs> we're just gonna start cutting from right here. We'll just cut in and work our way around. But I'll also show you how you cut out these little parts that are in between the letters. I'm not using the standard jigsaw blade on the left. I'm actually using the skinny scroll blade that you see on the right. It has a lot of teeth. And so those teeth allow me to get around these curvy parts, right? So this is what we want. We wanna be able to move that jigsaw and get a nice clean cut. And you'll notice here that I'm trying to stay either on the line or just a little bit to the left of the line because I don't wanna cut into my wood. And when I get to that little junction, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna create a pilot hole. So instead of trying to turn my jigsaw in order to make this, this slight turn here with the F, I'm not going to do that. Instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a pilot hole and I'm going to come in from the other direction. And I love pilot holes. It's really the easiest way to get your blade into an area that otherwise would be very difficult to cut. So you'll see here that we're inserting the blade, we're going up the length of that F, meeting at the junction, and then we're going to maneuver the blade and start from the other direction and cut down to where the F meets the A. Now there are other ways that you can start a cut with a jigsaw, but those are more advanced. And so we're just gonna do the very easy pilot holes, insert your blade, and then cut in very carefully along that line until you meet the next junction. If you have other power tools, you can use a band saw, you can use a scroll saw. I personally like the jigsaw and it took me about an hour to cut out, but it looked really, really good and it looked very professional too. And when you're cutting out the interior pieces of the letters, you'll do the same pilot holes. You'll put your jigsaw blade inside the holes and you'll cut in very carefully and work your way up. And if you do two pilot holes, it makes it a lot easier to maneuver around. So you'll find that you'll probably have to shift your work around a lot. You might be on the left side of the table, then now you're on the right side of the table. It's expected. You are making a lot of cuts here. Some of them are just very tight corners where you'll have to chip away some of that wood. Take your time, get your blade in there, and remember you're not in any kind of rush. If you need to do part of it one day and then the next day come and finish it up, that's okay. And remember there's always sandpaper. So if something doesn't come out perfect, you can always take some very fine sandpaper or maybe something a little bit more rough and smooth it out. 
And the most difficult part that I found was trying to cut the inside portion of the A. I did have to do a couple of pilot holes and there was a lot of cutting in and a lot of chipping out, <laughs> but it ended up turning out great. So what do you think? Huh? Do you like using a jigsaw? It's one of my favorite tools. I know there are other tools to use, but I personally like the jigsaw. So I think with pilot holes and repositioning your wood and knowing how to cut those really skinny corners, you know, those really tight, close corners, I think your word art is going to look amazing. So the next step, we need to sand it and stain it, and then we need to drill holes for the lights and we need to hang it. I sanded the entire thing front and back with 320 grit sandpaper and it felt really smooth when I was done. Before we start drilling, we have to get a sacrificial board. So any piece of scrap wood will do. You know, I usually would go for a three quarter inch piece of plywood. The reason why is because if you're drilling holes here, you don't want to drill through to your table. That's not good. And number two, if you try to drill through and you don't have something behind it, you're going to get something called tear out, which means it's basically going to split the entire back of your wood. You don't want that to happen. So we're going to put some wood underneath of here. Just be very careful because when you have this up here on the wood, this part now, if you lean on this, you could possibly crack it. So just be very, very careful. So you'll notice this drill bit that I'm using is extra sharp and pointy. That's a brad point drill bit. The reason why I'm using that is because it creates a very clean hole on the front of your project. You want it to look nice. We're going to be putting some lights through here. So you don't want, you know, a lot of splitting of the wood and cracking. It just wouldn't look good. And we're starting it right at the top of the F where it starts to loop. And we're also using a 730 seconds drill bit. So that's the exact size that's going to fit the lights that we ordered from Amazon. So this is the light kit that we're using. I got it from Amazon for just what, probably 10, $11. There are 60 lights on here. So it really depends on how big of a word you want your word to be. Will you have enough lights? So I'm going to show you exactly how to make sure the word that you are doing is the proper size. So you can see here that it has a really nice one inch light. I like that when it goes through the quarter inch plywood, you'll be able to see just the tip of that light shining through. So I really like that. With one hole drilled, we're now ready to start putting the lights in just to make sure that number one, the lights are gonna fit. And number two, we know exactly where to place the next light and the next hole. Stick that light in there and we can stretch it up and it seems like that's gonna be an appropriate location. So let's go ahead and drill that hole. Here's a little tip. Make sure that you're rotating your sacrificial board around so you're not drilling into the same hole in the same location, which could contribute to tear out on the back of your project. And we can take the other, the other light and we can thread it up through there and just make sure that it fits. And it does fit. And if we flip it over, we can see that there's not a lot of slack, which is good. We don't want it to be too loose. And later I'll show you how we're going to staple this down and hold it in place and you won't even be able to see it from the front. With two of these lights here, we can now figure out where the third one should be drilled. So I'm just going to pull this up. I don't want a lot of slack, but I don't want it to be really tight. And I can see that it could be probably right there. And I think that'll be a good location. So let's go ahead and drill that hole. So if we've measured properly, we could insert this light here in the bottom through the hole. And now we've got three lights. So this is how we'll work our way around. We'll keep measuring just by pulling it taut and then seeing exactly where we need to put the holes. And so if I rope that around, I can see that another one needs to go about there. Another one needs to go about there. And I don't want to do more than, let's say, two or three at a time because you don't want to mismeasure. And now you have holes in places where there's no lights. It's not going to work. It's not going to be enough, enough lights. So let's do a hole here. On this font that we're using for this word art, you'll notice that there are some parts that are just very skinny. This is one of the skinnier edges. And so you want to make sure that that drill is straight up and down, very vertical. If you happen to lean it to the side, you might bust through the side of your wall art. And I don't think you want that to happen. So just be very careful and keep it very vertical. 
Now the size of the holes that we're drilling is perfect for this strand of light, but if you are using a, a different strand of lights, make sure that you use the drill bit that will fit the size of the light so that it can easily go through. Now one thing you'll notice is that I did work out where I was going to place the lights. I drilled my holes, but this particular strand that I was using for the demonstration was only 16 feet. And you would think that's a lot, but when you're working with a word art this size, you actually need the 29 foot. So I do have links available for the 29 foot string of lights because the 16 is just too short. And you'll see when I flip this over, there is a complete letter <laughs> that had no holes, it had no wires, nothing. So you can just ignore that part. But this is what it looks like on the back side. You will have a lot of wires, a lot of cables, and you're like, how in the world am I going to hide this? Well, don't worry because I'm gonna show you the perfect way to do that. But first, we're gonna remove these wires because we need to pull out the sandpaper and get rid of some of these splinters. Now, generally, we didn't have a lot of splinters on the back, but you will get a little bit of tear out finish off with the sandpaper and then it's time to pull out the stain and we are doing a very dark walnut. You will need some lint free cloths and you'll dip it into the stain and very lightly rub it on, wipe it off and you'll notice the deep rich color coming through to the wood. And if you've sanded your wood properly in the direction of the grain of the wood, you should notice that it's a nice smooth finish. You won't get a lot of scratchy looking wood. You will need a pointy paintbrush to get into the cracks and crevices and don't forget to use a sponge applicator that works really well and don't forget to do the back. When you turn it over you want to see a nice pretty wood on the back as well as the front. And I don't know about you but I love the look of worn wood especially along the edge. So using my 320 grit sandpaper very lightly I ran it over the edges and you can see how it gives it a little bit more dimension. I think when you remove some of the color from the edges. And next up, the D-rings. This is how we're gonna hang this baby from the wall. And I've got a couple tips that'll make this very simple. So the first D-ring, you wanna add it to the F and we're gonna put it about two inches down from the loop at the top of the F. And there's two ways that you can hang this. It can be totally horizontal where it's straight or you can have it slanted. And I think that looks really good with font scripts. So here's the thing, when we're adding the other D-ring, depending on how you want it to hang, horizontal or sloped, you're gonna determine where to place the D-ring. So the lower you put the D-ring on the Y, the more slanted it's gonna be. The higher the D-ring on the Y, the more horizontal it will be. So that sounds kind of confusing, but if you want it slanted, I would say probably about an inch or two from that junction on the Y is the perfect place to install it. And that's where we're gonna do mine as well. And here's a great tip on how to figure out the distance without using a tape measure between your D rings, because you'll need to hang your hooks on the wall accurately and you don't wanna put hole after hole on your wall. Take a piece of painter's tape, mark the center of the D rings, and then take your painter's tape place it on the wall, of course, you need to make sure that it's even, and that is the spacing of your hooks. If you do it this way, you'll get it right on the first try, and it's amazing. Best tip in the world for measuring and hanging things on the wall. So this looks really, really good, and again, because we put the D-rings exactly where I told you to put them, it does have a little bit of a slant, which is good, which is what we want. So if you want yours to be even more slanted, you want to put your D-ring down here. Okay, if you want it to be more straight, you'd want to put your D-ring up here. So I think if you just keep this one at this location and you can change the position of this D-ring here at the Y, you can really get a little creative. So it looks good. So now we just have to add the lights and we're done. So adding the lights is pretty simple because we've already done it, we know they fit, and they go in there pretty quickly. Next, we're gonna actually secure these wires to the back using a wire cable stapler. The reason why we're using that is because it has curved round staples. That's what we want to protect the wires. We don't wanna use the staples on the right because those are more likely to cut into the wires, which can be very dangerous. So we are gonna use a wire cable stapler, and here's how you do it. 
So remember that sacrificial board that we used when we were doing our drilling? We're gonna need that again, and we wanna use that to help support the wood while we're stapling. We don't wanna push down on any part of this because it could crack if we're pushing. All right, so the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is load up the stapler. We already did that. We're using the T25 staples, and we wanna secure these lights in place, and we're gonna push it through so that the wire is flush. And then we're just gonna take our stapler and make sure that it's centered in the middle. And then we're just gonna staple it into place. And there we go, we have a stapled wire. So because we don't have a lot of slack here, what we can do now is move on to the next light and just put another staple right there. We won't have to put one here in the middle. It's okay because it's a lot of wood here, so it should be hidden. It won't roll around too much on us. And I'll do another staple. Again, just making sure it's supported. So I've got somewhere to press down, but the light can still come through to the other side. And we're gonna staple into place. So now I've got three staples in, one, two, three. And what I like to do is move on to the next light and secure that one. And then if there's any slack, what I like to do is either try to sort of wave the wire a little bit because it's, you know, there's a little bit of slack there. So I just like to wave it. And when I wave it, I might put one here. And then I might put one here and take it towards the middle. All right. So when we hang this on the wall, we won't see this. So then we move on to the next light. Here we've got a little bit more slack, so we can actually create another little wave and have it sort of gather and bunch in the middle and then secure it. Keeping our fingers out of the way, of course. And then I like to add additional staples so that that wire doesn't go very far. If you decide to put your lights very close together, if you drill holes very close together, you will have some slack left. So let me show you how to twirl the lights so that you're able to hide them back on the back side of this wood. Okay, so like I said, at the junction of every single light, I put a staple. All right, here at the top of this M or this I, we actually have two cables coming out there, so I'm just gonna staple those. All right, so I'm gonna go to the next hole here, and I'm gonna staple there as well. Keeping my fingers out of the way. I've got this slack, so what do I do with this slack? Well, let's go ahead and put a staple here. All right, so what we're gonna do when we have this slack, we're just gonna twirl it. We're gonna make like a little loop, and we're gonna lay it flat. And once we make that loop and lay it flat, then we're gonna to try to staple that loop down to the wood. All right, so now we've got that loop stapled. And once it's in place, we can add a couple more staples just so that loop doesn't come up. We'll do the same with this loop too. It's already starting to loop, which is good. So we'll make a little loop. We'll twirl it and then staple it. And then what you have here are t totally concealed wires. Totally concealed wires that no one's even gonna know. You've got the, all these wires stapled to the back. Pretty cool, right? So let's take a look at this completed word art. This is the word art that was on the wall. You see that I've got all the lights in. The lights are poking up through the holes. And let me turn it around so you can see what it looks like on the back. You would not know that there were so many wires tapered down here with these staples. I mean, it looks amazing. I just, I, I just love how well it all came together. And when you turn it over, all you can see is just the fun word art. You can't see any of the wires. All you can see are the lights. And let me show you how I hung this and how I was able to disguise the battery pack. When you go to hang your wall art, you'll likely have a strand of lights that are a little too long and that's good. So what, what I did here for this strand of lights is that I added a little bit of 3 m uh, command strip to the back of the battery pack and to the wall so that I can just easily adhere the battery pack. And then the leftover lights 
And you actually want to have leftover lights because I think it looks cool when you, when you put something over it to disguise the battery pack. It's kind of cool to have, you know, some of the lights lighting up, you know, the faux leaves that I put here. So we're going to just wrap this around very easily so that the lights can shine through. And then what we're going to do is add a little bit of uh, command strips to the front of this battery pack and we will be able to disguise it with some fake leaves, faux leaves I should say. And here's something you can do to really set off your word art is you can create a DIY custom frame for your word art. I got this from Home Depot. I believe it was probably maybe eight, nine dollars for a 10 foot board. And I bought two of them in order to make this large frame. I added a little bit of wood glue after I cut the corners at 45 degree angles. And then I used a stapler and just stapled them. You wanna let the glue dry before you start moving the frame. It's not a very sturdy frame when the glue is not dry. The staples will hold it, but it's just a little bit more stable with the glue. I added two D rings to the frame and I love that I can hang the frame or I can take it down and leave the wall art by itself. So are you totally loving this project as much as I am? Because I am thrilled. I want to make one for like every room in my house. So leave a comment below. Let me know if you like the word family or if there's another word that you want to cut out and be sure to subscribe. If you're not already subscribed, give it a thumbs up as well and find me at thriftdiving.com. If you enter your name and email, I will send you five eBooks, printables and checklists as a thanks for subscribing. Things to help get you started and continue your DIY projects. So I'm Serena Apia and I thank you for watching and I will see you next video.